Okay. Dorothy said, oh, man, I can let it roll today. <laughs> <laughs> well, that will call the meeting to order and have a roll call if you would. All right. All right. Uh, Dorothy Dalsred is excused. Richard Craven is excused. Uh, not sure where Ginger is at. I can't remember if she emailed me or not, but I'll check. Um, Bill Clark. Here. Doug Neely. Here. Trent Warnes. Here. Jerry Herman. So Here. we have a quorum. Okay, well, that went, uh, call, we call the meeting to order. And uh, uh, anything on the agenda that has to come on the agenda? I don't think so. This is a review, everything we need at this point, right? If you. Committee members have the option to add anything, but I right. don't think there was uh, in the um, The one thing there. Jerry brought up, I think, um, the meeting, I don't know if it was by email, is a discussion of the of the potential of uh, uh, a cove improvement, uh, John Runyon. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could maybe, uh, address that okay. in, in the uh, at review afterwards when we go right. for person by person. Communication. But I'm going to suggest that at a subsequent meeting that we actually invite John to come in. Yep. Okay. With that, we'll just continue. Staff presentation. All right. Um, actually, this is going to be item 7A. Um, right. I was briefly going to talk to you tonight. Oh, yeah. This is to cover um, use of the meeting room technology. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> public meeting Bill, rules. Bill, yeah. Bill's yeah. So <laughs> these touch screens that we used to have have been replaced by mice, which I think is a little more useful for folks to use. Essentially, uh, what we try to do is minimize the amount of paper, um, and we're supposed to be a paperless city hall. Uh, we don't always manage that, but uh, that's why we have all this technology. Um, the agenda you can actually scroll through by uh, touching on each individual item and then you can figure it out uh, how to open up documents and that sort of thing um, has anybody got any questions on how to do this because i think most of you are familiar with it okay um, the if we were going to have a presentation by our city recorder on the technology side of it, and we so well probably try to schedule schedule that on the next meeting right. as well. Um, we were also going to have a briefing on uh, the boards and commissions conduct manual or orientation manual, which I've put on your desk. This is a draft. I'm not sure if any of you have seen this before, but um, basically it covers code of conduct for all the committees and boards, and it's kind of a standardized set of uh, how to uh, go through the proper channels and deal with items and put them on agendas, how to communicate with the city commission, what each board and commission's official role is, um, what's the difference between an advisory board and a quasi-judicial board and those sorts of things. Uh, the Natural Resources Committee is covered under uh, page 15. Um, and I think the most useful as parts of this book are the chapter one, which is introduction to boards and commissions. Uh, it talks about what the role of citizen participation is for Oregon City. And then chapter two, the membership and appointment process, terms of office, obviously what has to deal with the NRC in particular, attendance requirements and quorum, um, and various other things. Uh, most of the things that the Natural Resources Committee deals with are advisory type things that are advisory to either the Planning Commission, City Commission, or to Parks and Recreation Advisory Committees. But there's also a larger role where we get involved in land use applications and reviewing natural resource applications because our bylaws and all of the things that we worked on when we adopted new bylaws uh, last year, uh, which have been adopted into the city code and passed by resolution of the city commission. Um, chapter three deals with coordination of the commission, city staff, and others. Um, and as I said, this is kind of a draft, so I expect that Jamie and, and Katie will want to come and present this in a little more detail to you. Um, the one 
uh, page that deals with uh, public meetings law. I think it's on page 22. Check that real quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Item 13 on page 22 deals with uh, Oregon public meeting law, giving the right to the public to attend all meetings of any governing body. And uh, you are a governing body under state definition. Um, that means that um, the notices for the meetings all need to be published according to the right amount of time. Um, there are certain aspects of being on a committee where you might get together informally or decide just to do a field trip and things of that nature. And in certain situations, you're exempt from the requirement for public notice when you do those sorts of things because you're not deliberating towards a decision. If you're deliberating towards a decision, or talking about something that might come up on a future agenda, then the public has a right to know that that's going to be on your agenda. So uh, that's well, what we can a, get yeah. together and go look at something. Sure, a couple of us. A couple of you. Yeah. Um, essentially, you can't have a quorum of your committee, which I believe for us is four. Um, but I think when you start to get three or more, that's when we start to get, we want to basically advise the public there's going to be a field trip and anybody can come along, something like that. And if we're ever worried about it, we provide notice. So that's kind of the long and the short of it. Um, so any questions on this? Please do look this over, and if you have any questions, send them to me and I'll send them along to the city recorder. This is an that. expansion of what's on the website? Because yeah, there's... I don't know. It might Well, be. there's a section on the website. Okay, yeah. Uh, but I don't think it was this extensive. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think this is more directed to the boards themselves, so it may not be on that website. Yeah, hmm. it might not. Um, but you are now the proud owners of the full manual. <laughs> Since you mentioned our website, maybe this is not the right time, but uh, when I went took, took a look at our web, uh, the city website, it says our meetings are to be announced. Is that? Oh, well, it shouldn't TBA. say that. It should say regular meeting time is second Wednesday of every month. Yeah. So, that's, yeah. that's what it says, is TBA. Oh, okay. Which, Thanks for the heads up. I'll get that changed. If we right. probably want to. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Um, no, no wonder we don't have. No wonder we have nobody. Yeah. Wants <laughs> <it>. <laughs> um, all of the boards and committee meetings, you know, there's official place for those is on the website under when you click on the meetings link, um, and that is I can bring that up on our screen. Yeah, yeah. When you come on the meetings, they do announce them. Yeah. Though. If you yeah. go to the meeting okay. section, all right. And, uh, but but it should be it should not be a, to be announced on mm -hmm. on our web on our segment. Yeah. But they, they get the listings for all the meetings in a week and we'll be on okay. the, in that. So right week. now, oh, uh, go away. Um, this is the homepage, orcity.org, and you click on the agendas, minutes, and videos link. That is the official repository of all the agendas. There's more than a week's worth there. Wow. And you can search through here and oh, okay. search by yeah, individual like boards, so natural resources. Yeah, yeah well, that's real clear. Yeah. Choose the years, 2016. Uh, that just shows NRC meetings for this year. And you can really dial it in. Yeah. You can also type on agenda items and use uh, search words and things right. of that nature. Yeah. Okay. So that's the official place where good. you go to look for agendas. And Our agenda progress. is available, however. Yeah, so Everybody. right now <laughs> it shows TBA. our meeting and it shows the video is in progress. And so if the public clicks on this link, it'll come up as a video oh, streaming. Yeah, the minutes are not available. But I'm yes, not going to click sorry. on that because it creates this weird feedback loop. We haven't had good luck with that when we're actually in a meeting. So. <laughs> Um, okay, I'll get that out of the way. Any questions about it, about the website for now? That, but I will change that on our NRC homepage, Jerry, so for sure. I think I also yeah. saw it on a um, 
well, I'm a Falls Cable Access, you know, when it came up, Natural Resource Committee, mm -hmm. it, that's where it said TBA, too. Okay. You know. Oh. Okay. That's probably so what that's I'm thinking of more website. than anything else. All right. But anyway. All right. Well, okay. Renee's back there, so you can maybe let Melody know in, at Willamette Falls, and we can make sure that there's coordination there. Yeah. All right. With that, uh, since our uh, our minutes are not available at this point, basically because we have not approved them uh, for the last time, and I guess they come officially available after we've approved them. So have people had a chance to look at the minutes or to scan them? And if so, can I have a motion for approval? I'll make a motion to approve them. And I'll second it. Uh, we have the motion and the second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Well, that was four, so I won't go any further. <laughs> anyway, uh, is anybody, I see nobody from the public. I assume that you're scheduled, so uh, we'll, there's no business scheduled. And so we're going right into the new business and the Clackamas uh, Community College's Environmental Learning Center planning file. So I, I suppose you are here to speak to that. You want to make an introduction? I'm, I'm going to uh, give a staff level presentation for the project, and then if it, this can be pretty informal. If you have questions after I speak, then uh, we can ask uh, Jerry and uh, John. John, sorry, uh, to come up and answer questions about the, uh, more specifics. Um, so I just want to let you know that um, we have uh, put, sent out the notice today f for the public comment period for this application. Um, it is uh, file numbers DP1601, that means Detailed Development Plan, and NR1508, so that means Natural Resource Overlay District application. This is a staff level review, uh, meaning it's a type 2 application, public notice and comment for 14 days. It's based on the code. Uh, they're not requesting any variances or adjustments from the code so it will follow the criteria in the site plan and design review code and the natural resource overlay district code um, the entire application and all the exhibits that have been put together for this application are on file in the planning department we've also uploaded all the electronic files to the uh, project website which you can link to on our on our web page and we also put the link to the web page on the public notices which go out to the various groups so today we provided notice um, the comment period is March 28th that's when it ends after March 28th we'll be uh, looking at the criteria writing the staff report and putting out a, no a decision based on that uh, any comments that we receive individually or from the NRC uh, we've taken into account and uh, made part of the staff report um, and then I'll now I'll go into a little more detail about the application and if I gloss over things I apologize I'm not I don't intend to um, the map sheet I think that is the most uh, useful for the purposes of the Natural Resources Committee's review is the one that is on the screen behind you um, but and on your screens like you can toggle by seeing this this is one of the many sheets that is with the project it's a large site like it's a five place. acre site um, the project involves Perfect. primarily restoration of the <laughs> wetlands associated with the environmental learning center uh, a lot of those uh, ponds that were originally doing very w a great job of uh, filtering and, and uh, providing good habitat have started to silt in and uh, the college has applied for a metro grant in which they have received to improve this area um, and it involves uh, getting out getting a lot of the sediment out of the ponds recreating some berms replanting native species getting rid of invasive species and creating a, uh, a way to provide uh, slower water movement through the site to cool it before it goes into the Newell Creek headwaters to, cool uh, to improve water quality. 
Um, that's kind of the long, the short. Uh, so is that right. detention yeah. or retention? I can never keep it straight. Uh, I think that would be well. This is not like it's retention. I believe. It, it, yeah. it, it, I yeah. think it yeah. sort of it slows yeah. down the water. Slows too. down the water. So it's kind it's of what we try to do in our storm ponds as well. But this is taking a lot of drainage from the impervious surface on the college site, um, and uh, it's part of the original master plan for the college. So um, even though this is moving forward now, it will be. Uh, an amendment to the uh, existing master plan. Uh, essentially, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here on this table in the corner and scroll around a little. Locality-wise, it's on Innskeep Drive. Uh, there's the existing parking area here. Um, so there will be some improvements to the parking area for landscaping here. What this chart, uh, what this map does a very good job of and is de delineate the differences between what is existing and what is new. So um, the first big solid line around all of the delineated wetland ponds is the official natural resource boundary that's prescribed by city code. Um, and so they these are 50 foot buffers from the edge of these wetlands and the uh, area within that is considered the area where you have to analyze your impact uh, if you're creating new impervious surface within this area it has to be reviewed under one set of the code if you're making an expansion or replacement of an existing structure within this area um, then there's a separate part of the code Essentially, what you're seeing here is these solid gray areas are, uh, without cross-hatching, are considered new. And then um, the cross-hatched areas that are here are existing development, which is exempt. Um, essentially, there's about 7,500 square feet of new impervious surface area being created either through new um, small expansions to the existing structures, um, new trails. Um, there are some provisions for exemptions for certain types of trails for a certain width. 48 inch <laughs> wide trails are exempt if they meet a certain uh, structure standard and uh, but if they're wider than that, they get reviewed as new impervious surface and that sort of thing. Mostly bark trails that are 48 inches wide would not be considered reviewable under the code. So it is complicated. It's a large site. Um, essentially what they're going to be doing is restoring um, and putting back 15,000 square feet of 15,000 square feet of new plantings to offset the approximately 7,000 500 square feet of new impervious surface area. Um, and then you've got the in water or in wetland work that's going on to enhance those wetlands with uh, semi emergent plants and, uh, and wetland plants and that sort of thing. Um, other things that are going on structurally, uh, I think there's four existing weirs that are going to be replaced and modified in order to help with the water passage and one new weir. We've got some replacement of existing bridges um, and a few new bridges. Um, we probably have to pay attention to uh, some accessibility requirements where the trails um, uh, coming in from the parking lot and to the pavilion, but I believe that's already ADA accessible. Um, and then there are s some trees being removed in order to make way for certain improvements. Um, some of the trees that are going to be removed, in fact, a lot of the trees that are going to be removed are smaller invasive tree species listed on the Oregon City nuisance plant list. Those types of trees are not required to be re mitigated for under the code because it's just. Um, but 
in any in any event there are 75 new trees going to be planted approximately 365 shrubs and forbs and then uh, an uh, a lot of different ground cover coming in as well um, the other aspects that are being improved is the walkway and interpretive trail through the site um, and opportunities for interpretation um, there was an original plan to light that pathway but the uh, current plan right now is not to light the pathway but to make it a, a dawn to dusk type facility which would not be lit after hours so that um, that's a modification the new lighting plan was uploaded to the uh, website this morning showing that showing that change so there'd be no bollard or pedestal lighting on the uh, pedestrian path All the, right. the structure towards the top right. that's not hashed is a is that a they're talking about it's, it's a square yeah there you got your hand right on that's it no so that's the existing entry pavilion which we okay. all know and there's not going to be much modification to this at all except to shelter the entrance for uh, for, for I, rainwater I attended some of the early planning meetings there was some discussion about having I think a, a covered area for mm -hmm. uh, and classes and so forth okay possibly do you guys want to come up and talk about that a little bit more yeah right so um, come up to the microphone if you would. yeah we need yeah. you recorded <laughs> <laughs> I'll scroll around. If yes, so to. the um, decision by the uh, design team in the college was to renovate the existing pavilion structure because it's essentially underutilized yep. by the college at this time yes. and, and make it uh, more accessible and usable as sort of that classroom feature that was part of the program. Uh, is this on? Yeah. Uh, if the light's on, it's on. Okay. Yeah. So as a result, um, we're modifying the the other part that led to the the conclusion that we would renovate this building is um, the need for public restrooms in the area, uh, particularly restrooms that were ADA accessible. So there um, is two restrooms currently in this building, but neither of them are ADA accessible. So we are going to renovate those um, to make them both ADA accessible and then remove um, some of the wall and windows on the south and east side of the pavilion to um, make it so that they can actually open it up so that it essentially becomes uh, a class, it could become sort of an outdoor classroom environment um, and encourage more use um, throughout the college and make it uh, a true learning center for the college. You, there are two st two structures. Well, three yeah. if you include the uh, planetarium. But there are uh, two structures there, and I, and so both of them are going to be redone. Is that right? No. So the Lakeside Hall. Okay. Um, we are not touching in any way, shape, or form. All right. We're only um, again, uh, basically modifying some doors and windows of of the entry pavilion, the the ADA ramp, and the restrooms. Um, very f few modifications, uh, <clears throat> no modifications to structure or anything like that. Okay. <clears throat> well, while we're on the structure, the, I, there's some beautiful art, hand-carved artwork above those transom windows on the pavilion. Throughout the pavilion on its south and east side, are those going to be saved, I hope? Yes, the you know doors, the doors themselves, um, and the carvings, and the carvings in. above. Yes. Okay, good, good. I never asked that before. So the the light, <laughs> I can barely see where the Lakeside Hall is, but but because you're not modifying, it's not shown as an element in this discussion. Mm -hmm. I can see where it's at. I can't quite see where the observatory is at. Maybe I do. Yeah. The observatory is right above the four there. Okay. That, right. Uh, okay. Octagon. Gotcha. All right. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, I, I guess I'm going to ask a question that cross hatching above the observatory that would be to the west deep cross hatching in the area just a um, again west of it yeah is that is just an open area right now it's almost like you drive a truck in there I don't know why that is the way it is maybe because they had to do some work on the observatory five years ago ten years ago is that going to receive a lot of attention for vegetation it's really open 
Right. So the crosshatch um, over the top of the gray indicates um, essentially pathway that's existing. Okay. And then the gray indicates we're going to come in and improve that. Okay. So it's still going to be largely a pathway, but there, if you notice, there's a, a log right there. There's mm -hmm. actually going to be an interpretive um, area right there about sort of uh, a nurse log and, oh, okay. and that kind of thing. Yeah. And then as you go to the um, what would be the west side of the pavilion, that all that area will all be improved with new plantings um, and landscape. And then there's actually uh, going to be um, some two steps. Uh, there'll actually be two steps the full length of that west side of the pavilion that essentially allow um, a classroom to sit there and, and maybe receive okay. some uh, um, some instruction then maybe prior to then going through and using the, um, the Environmental Learning Center as a learning opportunity. I think we all have questions. I've got to find out first from Pete if there's anything else you need to do in, in the overview before we start asking questions. Um, well, the uh, application will be uh, the Natural Resources Overlay District part of the application. Seven, chapter 1749 is going to, is already under review by our uh, wetland uh, consultants, David Evans and Associates, who mm will -hmm. be providing a report. Um, they're contracted to the city to provide. Uh, you know, expert over review for f files of this type, um, and they would be providing that report to staff in approximately three weeks' time. Um, and we'll base our, you know, we'll take those findings and include them in our final staff report approving the site plan and design review application. Uh, we will, we've, uh, we expect we'll get, you know, good feedback from the public on this. Uh, you know, people have been very interested in the college master plan in general, but also particularly in the ELC. So uh, the team already met with the Caulfield Neighborhood Association. Um, and how was that meeting? Uh, my understanding mm -hmm. is uh, I was not at that meeting, yeah. but uh, uh, Bob, Bob, Bob Cochran, went. Bob Cochran yeah. was there, yeah. presented our um, renderings and, and sort of design presentation. Um, and it went well, and there were virtually no questions okay. about it. Um, you know how well it was attended, or do you? Uh, uh, we did get uh, the sign-in sheet, which is required yeah, for the application. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't yeah. recall how many names were on it. But it is part of the application. Yeah, so. it's part of the application. You can look it up. <laughs> we can look it up, I guess. Um, the, uh, yeah, thanks. Um, the Public Works Department has said that um, you know, since it's a enhancement project, they're not at this point. They're not going to be asking for an official stormwater report because that's going to come with the master plan for the college. Um, so they're essentially just going to look over um, the planning department staff report, and if they have any concerns, once we write our report, they'll chime in. But they're not going to be reviewing this for compliance with our stormwater and grading design standards at this point they don't think it triggers that um, so that's the official word from them um, but now that we're under formal review we'll get comments from public works on that yeah um, so that's pretty much what I have to offer at this point um, I haven't had a lot of time to sit down with the application yet and go through it um, I'd be happy to um, you know, schedule additional meetings with the NRC on this issue if if we need more time. Um, that's yeah. Yep. Public comment ends the 31st of, of this month. March 28th. 20. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. what's the turn timeline for for decision whatever, permit, um, permitting? Yeah. Well, a Type Two land use decision is a preliminary land use approval. If there is any public improvements required as a condition of that land use approval, they have to get a a permit from Public Works. I don't know what their timeline is. You do anticipate needing one. It depends on whether there's any sewer, sewer or water line required in the public right of way. Most of this area is outside the public right of way. Um, building permits, possibly for structures such as uh, bridge crossings. Uh, plumbing permits for the upgrades to the bathrooms, 
not a lot of review from the Public Works Department is anticipated for the project right now, but maybe some per building permits. Yeah. There will be some per building permits, yeah. Yeah. Um, and there, yeah, I was going to ask if there were any, you know if there are any stormwater facilities coming directly into the site that actually drain into the site? There's sheet flow. There's sheet no, flow. No, yeah. I know that, yeah, but I'm actually talking about stormwater pipes and so forth, formal, formal structures. Um, no, John, there are not. No, <clears throat> they have no stormwater facilities. Okay. Well, the network that goes around the college oh, yes. from two sides <laughs> with 17 drains in <clears throat> Randall yeah. Hall parking lot and Barlow. Is that what you're referring to? No, I, I'm asking whether the, those stormwater, any stormwater catchments that go into the, go into the, to their stormwater system end up at this facility. Well, up here uh, on the east, sorry, the west, sorry, the west side, um, crossing over into the parking lot, there is a plan to replace a storm, an existing storm line. Um, I think the intent of the project is to try to filter storm water coming into the site from the sheet flow that's coming from the campus in a more natural fashion. Okay. That is the intent. And some of that can be accommodated quantity wise, but if there's overflow due to a heavy, heavy event or storm event, there will need to be contingencies to convey uh, water quantity that exceeds the capacity of the pond uh, and um, I'm not sure how much that is but um, I know that they looked at that with the initial master plan but, right uh, so it has some capacity mm -hmm. uh, as to, to, to storm water to be a storm water um, facility but it that's not the intent of it it's mm -hmm. it's a habitat restoration and water quality um, but it's not it's its intent is not to be a stormwater facility um, most of the water then comes from the grassland there I mean I presume the parking lots at the absolutely at the uh, at the college go into a stormwater system mm -hmm. that don't come into air well as I know it <laughs> yeah, that, that, 17 that. drains go into two major pipes that are 24 inch I believe in that. But they, 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 they don't empty it And half the college campus flows, um, including sheet runoff, into stormwater, well, into collection basins. Yes. Collection. And that water won't in And it, all uh, that comes into this thing oh, through, the, no. through the two 24 inch pipes. Is that half, well, wrong? half the water, uh, essentially the campus, they, my yeah. understanding is half. the campus can be divided into half. Half, half yeah. virtually goes south, right. and yeah, half goes it. north from a natural right. yeah. flow standpoint. Um, okay. And then there is a there is a large pipe just south of here. Right. Um, south of the campus. South, well, south of, of the Environmental Learning Center. Just south of the yeah. diagram. Um, not here. But it, <laughs> right. <laughs> but it does not directly flow into this facility. From the high school, yes. No. Oh. Uh, so there's water coming in, as Jerry said, from two pipes. They flow into here. And uh, but there's no, even that area to the north that you, Pete, pointed out the storm line there. Yeah. That is actually not a treatment facility. That's just conveying storm water. Okay. So well, all that, that's still my question. I guess yeah. I, that's my question. Though. But uh, yeah. It, it, so there's no there's no stormwater facilities discharging except for you know half the campus coming in to the headwater channel there basically. Okay. So what we're going to be doing here is treating all new stormwater right. from the parking lots coming into the site. And uh, we did prepare a stormwater plan, or KPFF did, and that was submitted to yes, DEQ. And we have, in very short order actually, we received permits from Department of State Lands, the Corps of Engineers, DEQ, and also the National Marine Fisheries Service. So that's, we've taken care of all the state and federal permits. Mm. I, 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 have, I have a few questions about this. But I assume that with new parking lots going in, I'm sure with the, with the new construction that's gonna occur, greater flow is going to come into the site than currently is the case? No. So even the, the parking lot that we're doing here, which is an improvement, um, there's a stormwater treatment on that east side there. So that will actually be pre-treated before that water is released into this. All new development on the campus will be required to be pre-treated. 
and this facility is not that treatment. And the water doesn't come into this facility. I mean, it my question, they could be pre-treated and the water still comes into this facility. Yeah. It'll be pre-treated yeah. and it'll come into the facility. Okay, correct. okay. Yeah. so and my so, statement is correct, that uh, there will be a greater volume of water, that may be treated water, but there will be a, a greater quantity of water coming into the facility than it's currently the case if they're building new parking lots? Well, no, because... I mean, because essentially you already have your catchment basins, right? Or your, your catchment area is kind of the area of the campus. Mm -hmm. And so your area, just because you're building new buildings, the area of catchment isn't really being increased. However, um, it will be detained, pre-treated, and in more, I guess, timely released into this facility. So I'm not sure the volume into this facility is going to be any greater well, than well, some, some, some. I mean, some of the water that goes on to and and on to, onto the grass line and so over permeates the soil. Does it go, go into the into the? And you're going to remove some of that uh, that permeable, right? Yeah, and so that water that's so th those new parking lots ultimately the water will come into this facility after being pre-treated and detained. And right. There will be retention. So I, I understand. So that. I guess it could be more. I see what you're saying. You're okay. <laughs> now, now here's 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 a question. My and that's not my understanding. I now know that water actually comes from the high school into the campus area, stormwater. Uh, and uh, does that water get pre-treated and going to end up in this facility as well? No. Or do you know that? The, the water from the high school. My understanding, John. The water from the high school. There is an issue there. Yes. And that water is on the other half that, f that flows south. No. No. There's no. a there's a no. stormwater no. pipe that goes no. through the that goes under the pathway uh, that extends from the high school right. and it goes onto campus. Correct. And it's taken out of the Caulfield basin and it comes into the Middle Creek basin. That is correct. Well, uh, you don't probably have that map, but uh, yeah, Doug is correct. There's a yeah. Oregon native, Oregon white ash native wetland in that area that when I get high school build a I don't know 10,000 square foot detention area, which is supposed to store their stormwater and maybe improve it, maybe. And that, that water is correct. I believe that does come in here. Uh, I remember that was somewhat controversial about it changing basins. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. So that water also comes into this facility. Yeah. Well, right. Okay. So there's it's treated, but it comes into the facility. <laughs> <laughs> but they haven't told us about the new ELC South that is proposed five years from now, you see, to intercept all that. I'm just kidding. You're right, though, that that water does come in. We didn't have to deal with that water before when we built the center. Uh, and it's, it's a new source. It does have a big detention area, though. Mm -hmm. It does, yeah. yeah. Right. The other pipe that John talked about, this is the one that no one seemed can, can, to figure out. There's another pipe that used to bring water from the Moss Junior High campus, which is now the Senior High campus, from a heat pump well, a thousand foot well, that then brought water into us 200 gallons a minute. And believe me, it was a wonderful thing <laughs> because it really improved things. Good, deep water and all that. That pipe still is there. My question would be, I don't know if you've figured this out yet, are they, are they using it at Moss, now senior high school, for stormwater runoff from their campus and sending that down here? Do you, do you have any idea? I don't idea? know that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure we can answer that without asking our city engineer. Yeah. Um, but I will try to yeah. try to do that. <clears throat> yeah. Because I think that, you know, the campus's facilities are, a lot of those aren't mapped because they're private. Uh, they're not public lines, yeah. um, so we need to get back to you on that on that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to mm -hmm. I want to make sure we know where all mm -hmm. the water is coming from. Yeah. It's coming to this facility, and some of it's coming from outside the Mill Creek Basin. Sure. Um, so I will be happy to report back on that and let mm -hmm. you know. Um, here is. But there is a stormwater management report here. I have not reviewed this in any detail at this point. Uh, it is part of the record. So, um, 
some of us had some concerns about the 17 range you know the discussion we had about that in the Barlow Hall <coughs> Randall Hall parking lot they don't have they don't have oil separators and the question is what do you do about that because that but John's design and their design intercepts and improves the water as it moves through it's going to deal with the petroleum I mean, literally it'll be petroleum you know from people's cars and all that that get in the, in the system and I must tell you that I don't think I ever told you this but one time since heavy metals are on the news right now somebody decided <clears throat> on a five gallon pail of white paint latex tipped over in a van to hose it out in the Barlow Hall parking lot and the entire stream clear down to Abernathy turned white and that and we were really concerned about what what the college was not doing you know and we were in, intercepting all this stuff all the time I didn't have to say another word the college president was getting calls from where well, our cows are going to die birds are dropping out there it wasn't true but you know titanium dioxide was the colorant mm -hmm. and all the way down to, to Abernathy was white and that you know what do you do about that? You can't get the tight aim. You know way you could probably polish that out. But my point was, uh, it was a real learning experience. And after that, cool. yeah. then they asked us to figure out a way to make sure that if, uh, if, if a spill occurred you know, on the campus, that there would be immediate response. And so we trained the public works of the college campus folks how to deal with that. So anyway. <clears throat> uh, I did get. A uh, letter from Dee Dee, an email from Dee Dee Dalzer, um, with comments um, with respect to some ideas and for interpretive signage and that sort of thing, which I will be happy to forward along to you. Uh, yeah. From who? From Dorothy. Oh, Dorothy. Yeah. yeah. So uh, she uh, uh, was really excited about the project. She's looked through a lot of the materials manually as well before it was deemed complete so I, I'm pretty sure she's yeah. behind the project she just wanted to get yeah. some ideas on the interpretation. I don't know if you've heard me on this point before but mm. uh, the, the trees that are going to be removed um, are are some of them a fair, reasonably large diameter? Go to the next sheet. Some of them are. There's, 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 there's a list. Yeah. Uh, I've, I can't remember the demolition plan. I, the, well, the answer is yes. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if I. I, I need any more than that. Yeah. Um, how are those trees going to be used? Are we going to use those trees? Well, I was going to. I mean, I. So I would suggest to leave those logs if, as yeah. long as they don't sprout up. Absolutely. Leave Absolutely. those logs in there. Yeah. I mean, a right. lot of the, uh, a lot of the amphibians that we have are. Right. Live two lives, and uh, right, right. and uh, well, I we we will have place. large wood as part of this, so okay. we're going to have snags in there, you know, yeah. within amphibian logs. That's what we're calling them, okay. basically, in the pond itself. But how about I'm outside the pond? I'm talking about on the on the on the ground itself. Yeah. Yes, there's and, right. There's down logs and wood and and snags and. Uh, should be a, one of the graphics should show that, but it may not show. I have these forest floor restoration um, as opposed to bare ground. Correct. Mm -hmm. so, let's see. Which one of these might it be? Maybe the tree. I, mean, it won't, I don't know yeah. if the details showed up in the, the land use application. Oh, they may not. I think they're in the 404 permit. Mm. The tree. Yeah, they tables. I, I thought 18 trees were to be removed. That's why I remember hearing. But am I wrong? Yeah, that shows some of the trees. Actually, if you go back, you can see some of the logs are there that are being used. See them? This one? Yeah, just yeah. zoom in. You can see some of the logs in the ponds, and then there's some um, brush piles, etc. cetera. See, so those habitat so logs. Habitat log, there's another one. Yeah. Relocated snag. There's one. Mm hmm. Scattered around mm -hmm. there, oh, they probably don't show up here, but there's other uh, woody debris that we're going to be putting around. Right, so this yeah, sheet. Actually, up there in the top left hand corner, yeah, you can see those um, with fallen yeah. branches and logs placed for habitat. Okay. 
This is sheet 11 of 14, L201, which is in the, in the plan set. All right. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the amphitheater improvements? Uh, so the amphitheater, um, yeah, essentially in this area we're taking taking down a little bit of a, a, a mound to make it uh, uh, more of a flat meadow area and then nesting in the um, amphitheater which will be um, composed of, of wood benches and, and essentially a gravel area um, that should be used as a, as a learning you know, opportunity. Uh, relocating the, to the totem that's already there on the um, property and relocating it as a as sort of a focal point or feature of, of the amphitheater. Um, and the path around the amphitheater, so the circle around there, is um, ADA accessible. Mm -hmm. So the path system that's dotted, uh, rendering, that's enhanced path, and then other paths are just dash, 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 existing to be left? Right, the dashed ones are uh, existing. They're often Im uh, improved. That's where you have to kind of go back to the other map. Okay. But, uh, but they are not um, accessible by it. Okay. Yeah, the other map is primarily for the purposes of figuring out compliance with the, sure. with the natural resource district. This graphic and some of the other sheets are much easier to read because they okay. just show the improvements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And then earlier on, I heard you talk about lighting. Did I hear down directed? Uh, did I hear down directed path lighting or any lighting? It is all um, yes. It is all uh, hundred percent horizontal cutoff and downward. Good. The only light now, because we we had bollards that were that type of light, but um, recently with discussions at the college, we decided that the the natural area of the ELC should be a essentially a, done, a dust to dawn. Uh, use it should be um, natural it should be natural and also with the observatory so there are um, downward lights um, on the pavilion uh, itself okay. we're taking those off and replacing them with LEDs that are also only downward um, to get better efficiency and then the new entrance canopy will have lights under the canopy that okay. are also downward only um, we have installed um, a few <coughs> outlets around the amphitheater uh, outdoor outlets that should the college want or need power for an event um, then there's a special uh, occasion and a way to do that but, but not um, not bollard lighting <laughs> in the northeast parking lot <clears throat> where Inskeep Drive swings down there is a pole with a mercury vapor light on it I think it's still there <laughs> That was a real problem we had with that observatory. I will have to tell you, we took special steps, and I won't tell you what they were. <laughs> but the bulb shattered one night, okay? But that bulb is there again. I just want to point it out to you. It's been a very bad situation for the observatory. Um, that is the one that's in the, the unimproved parking area, yes. I believe. Yes. Yeah, it, it's technically out of our scope of work, but I suppose we could mention to the college. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Amazingly enough, uh, South Ridge Shopping Center adjoining put up a huge berm of rocks, which we asked them to do. And then the trees that grew up, we asked for density. It was quite a little fight about that whole thing. And now you can't even see the lighting in South Ridge Shopping Center. It's right. really remarkable. And it was down directed stuff, too. Right. They changed it. That was 20 some years ago. The observatory, you know. Better to look at mm -hmm. stars, oh, yeah. the stars and lights, you know. <clears throat> yeah. All right, well, I think they've done a really good job. I, I, you know, so it's a lot of changes, but you know, I've worked through it <laughs> personally, and, uh, but I do feel that there's a lot of really good things happening here. And your, your sensitivity to the pavilion and allowing it to be a more open dimensional space, that's an interesting idea, but, you know, really good idea. Yeah, hopefully it will make it much more of an asset to the college yeah. and, and more uh, classes and curriculum will want to come down and use it mm -hmm. um, and, and take advantage of the whole 
uh, Environmental Learning Center as a learning opportunity. I also like to point out that next to the old Smuckers building there, in fact, you can't see it on this plan, but if you went to the demo plan, uh, we are removing the, um, there's a green prefabricated sort of storage building and quite a bit of, of, concrete. of concrete there, mm -hmm. which it were, were removing as part of this project, which is a so few thousand going, feet of, going. Okay. few th thousand feet of uh, concrete and impervious yeah. area within the L uh, ELC. So, yeah, yeah. that um, hazardous storage yeah. and yeah. all that paving. Used to be the kiln for the art department. Exactly. Uh, used to, That's all being know. removed um, right. out of the resource area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. More questions? Are you are you are you going to attend the uh, Saturday event there at the LC? Will you be making any presentations there or not? This Saturday? I think it's uh, I well, think it's I, the twelfth. Nine it nine till this, Saturday this Saturday, I, nine till noon. I've not been asked to do so. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering if they were going I to think Bob Cochran's presenting or somebody he, presenting. Yeah, Bob oh, okay. he mentioned that today. So yeah. he'll he'll have diagrams yeah. and so forth. Yeah, yeah he has yeah. drawings yeah. and boards right. and stuff. very good. And I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but we, we're going to come in with my youth crew and start cleaning up the site every Saturday in, Starting in April, May, April all the way May. through the 21st of May, which is the right. college's birthday. That's right. So, so we're looking for volunteers, people with whiskers in particular, that love the, out, the outdoor environment. <laughs> From 9 until noon, and then with the public, we will work and, and, and treat everything we can to make it look better, uh, realizing some of it may go away in the future but make the whole thing look more attractive and then improve the safety for people to be able to walk around on the 21st which is the college's birthday where hundreds of people are expected to be going around here right. so yeah <coughs> Project, you're talking about removing guys. invasive uh, trees you're going to get rid of invasive turtles and invasive bullfrogs and yeah we are going to yes. get rid of the bullfrogs yeah we have a plan to actually okay. remove the bullfrogs bullfrogs so. yes new tree that's right. I and, how do, and the question is, how do you keep them out of the future? Well, I know. Yeah, good luck with that, right? Yeah. Yeah. It'll be temporary. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. good. Hmm. I, I didn't hear John talk about your vegetation scheme in the ponds. I'd love to have this group hear about it because it's really interesting what you're doing. The, the weirs that you're, the movement of water through stuff that will go under water and then emerge again. I, I'd like to have you explain that. It's an interesting concept. So the uh, so the the water is going to come into the facility. Uh, there's going to be a forebay there, and we'll remove the sediment from that forebay. It'll be slowed by a weir, and then it'll flow um, to the north there, and then be redirected. It'll go. Uh, it'll stop at a weir, basically, be redirected through the pond, and then meander through the pond. And we have emergent, submergent plants that we'll be putting in. Actually, Renee at the Horticultural Department at Clackamas Community College is uh, growing those species. I gave a presentation to really? her class, which was great. And then, uh, and so I went out into the greenhouse and they showed me all of the plants that they're actually growing. Mm -hmm. And what I, what I asked them to do is to, plant, to grow them early on and to have them be as tall as possible so that when we actually do the planting late summer, uh, when the water comes up, the tops of those plants are going to be above the water level. And so that then, uh, so we're going to have various benches, we're going to have open water where you had, you know, the, the fish viewing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, proposal before, that's going to be the deepest water there. So we're going to have a, a kind of a combination of open water, then these benches, and they're going to be uh, either three feet deep, uh, 18 inches or one foot deep. So there's going to be various uh, depths there. And as the water goes through, the particulates in that water are going to settle out and you know if it hasn't settled out before they they're going to be settled out in the pond they're going to be taken up by what's living on the plants so that's going to be treating the water as it goes through and then um, it used to flood where the uh, art building is or the old smuckers building that's going to be changed now we're building a new channel and uh, so that's going to be redirected and then it's going to go back out to the main channel and then down to newell creek so when the water comes in and we're actually working with a professor at uh, the college and he's going to have, we've set up stations where he's going to be taking water quality samples. Mm. And so he's going to bring his students out so he can take samples right when it comes out of the pipe near the forebay so he can see what the water quality is. And then 
as it goes through, mm. and then they can take look take a look at that data, and they can actually analyze uh, how well this you know passive treatment is working. And that's one of the things that really appealed to the agencies when I described it to all of them, is that this is a living classroom, it really is. There aren't that many places in the metro area here that you can actually collect this kind of data. Um, so, it's a, you know, we've really come a long way as far as stormwater treatment. You know, we're not having anything that's proprietary here. This is just basically Mother Nature doing what she does best. So as part of the uh, pond re restoration, you guys are talking about removing sediment. How, like, uh, estimate how much sediment? 500 cubic yards of, okay. a, of accumulated sediment. And what we're doing is we, we're creating these berms. And so we're creating this sinuous path that, uh, you know, uh, contact time is what you want. Mm -hmm. So you want to have as, you know, slow it down as much as you can. Obviously, we still want to have flow going through there. But we're creating these berms so that we, it's going to force it along this uh, you know, sinuous meandering path, path, meandering path until it gets down into mm -hmm. uh, the Newell Creek area. Did I say hear you say 500 cubic yards over time could be removed? No, right. That's how much we will remove? Yeah, in the beginning. So the first thing we do is we uh, we drain the ponds, remove all the sediment. Oh, I see. And take the it removal. Off site, okay. And then we bring in new material right. and then create these berms and then right. plant those berms. All right. All right. Well, I guess the question would be then, what do you think you'd collect over time? The lifetime of this. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. Um, Depends on upstream. Yeah, inputs. exactly right. You know, with the master plan, with the stormwater <laughs> treatment that's going to happen upstream, you know, in the campus itself, that's going to cut down on the sediment. We probably don't have a huge sediment source up there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't imagine we do. Mm -hmm. um, we did a similar project, or I did a similar project in Gresham, and we haven't actually accumulated that much sediment. Mm -hmm. This was 900 acres of untreated stormwater upstream. And uh, it's been actually re relatively sediment free, so I'm hoping that that's going to be the case here. Well, mm -hmm. with the the implementation of the four bay, um, and having access uh, to that, the idea is, is that the four bay will get the large majority of sediment um, and can be cleaned out, um, if need be, allowing the the meandering path to to stay, I guess, more pristine over a longer period of time and not silt up like we, like kind of the current condition of mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the yeah, it'll be ponds. What is, what is the age of the system as it is right now? 30 years. 40 years. 40 years. 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, do I feel old. <laughs> 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 he was, he was a guy. It's at 1976 oh, okay. when it started. <laughs> Well, we're all very excited about this. Yeah, uh, it's a great, great, great project. And, yep. Uh, as Mr. Neely knows, much and Jerry as well, this is much better than what was proposed originally. Yes, I, it seemed like it was a highly engineered thing originally. Oh yeah. And, yeah. Uh, Lots of concrete out there originally. Yeah, and uh, that's, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that evolved fairly quickly. <laughs> I will ask one question. I think Bob was in Cochran, Mr. Cochran was interested in putting a, a walkway around the Lakeside Hall exterior. To around it. Have you heard about that? I didn't hear about that. We, again, are not touching Lakeside okay. Hall. Well, all I'm going to say <laughs> is that we, we tried to make that absolutely, people are inside the building, wildlife's outside, so we didn't disturb what we were hoping to see. And I'm not so sure that a, it would be beautiful to be able to walk around the outside of the building. However, it might violate some of the intentions. I'll, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't be an issue. No plans, uh, no okay. plans for that. In Didn't this. involve you uh, at this yeah, point. Bring it up on Saturday if you're there. If okay. You're right? Yeah. There's a door there. <laughs> There's a door to the outside of the building. But let me tell you, it wasn't for anything I, I will tell you about right now. Okay. <laughs> for me to get out of there real quick. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. Uh, any other questions? No, <clears throat> I don't. We'll be, hey, we'll be seeing people throughout the period there's going to be a, yeah. there's going to be another uh, group meeting on um, I guess it's uh, tomorrow at uh, the LC to the people that have you get sure tomorrow is. I so. tomorrow is Thursday hmm? is there something going on Thursday hmm? oh I don't know anything about that it's the 10th right yeah well the 12th it's Saturday that's the, yeah, the no, day there's, there's also on the 10th oh people. what's going on Mike, I'll, I'll report on it later on. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. All right. I, I didn't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought there was a different plan being unveiled or something. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, they've done a really good job here, I think. 
It just, I, I think I said this before, amazes me the amount of, when I see all this overlay stuff and that what you guys now have to do, and, and 24 years ago when we were building this thing, 40 years ago, I'm sorry, um, when we were building this thing, we didn't have to do any of that. We were just doing the best we could to figure out what to do to deal with the stormwater runoff the campus and make a site that was very ugly attractive. So, yeah. well, we're, we're our code now reflects uh, Title Three and Title Thirteen of Metro, so it's longer and a little more involved, and we yeah. no longer are able to review this kind of thing in house. So that's why we have to have a consultant. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. But thank you very much. Thank um, you. All right. I appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> we're not going to be here with the, uh, We're not going to be here very long. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, if you'd like me to kind of respond back on the stormwater report. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think yeah, I, I'd be I interested think that, just to see yeah. where all the water comes from. Yeah. And so forth. There's a pretty good description in the 404 permit. Yeah, and that, okay. Yeah. In, okay. in the state Very permit. Good. Yeah. And the, uh, and, and the water, the pump, the water used to be pumped out of the, uh, deep, out of the deep, campus deep, to see deep, if, that water, if that water still comes through the facility. It may not. Well, the heat pump well at Moss now or you say senior high it doesn't exist anymore no <laughs> but so i wish that water did come there because this is a really dry we environment here during the water. summer we don't want the water we don't want the water from other sub basins entering <laughs> into this place i think uh <laughs> when the master plan amendment comes up and the first phase of the new building the technology building comes forward for site plan review that will trigger full compliance with the stormwater and grading design standards which are newly adopted uh, by uh, the city last year um, so you said technology uh, building that's uh, to be in the south there well the whole parking lot area yeah 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 that's right right yeah so the 17 seen drain, that yet. 17 drains i kept talking about or you don't know how much of a problem that was for us because yeah. everything under the sun without a, a separator without an inverted siphon came to us cigarette butts and a lot worse than that okay so it, i think they're going to have to correct that when that technology building evolves which will help everything so yeah okay all right thank you all right thank you project it, it also goes to show what can be done with the metro neighbor in the neighborhoods grant project um, when you can leverage that kind of money so it's good okay well we come down to the communications and I'll I'll start um, we you have a calendar there to uh, Steve uh, excuse me Pete do you have a calendar uh, uh, yeah, let me pull this. Can you tell me is uh, Saturday is the uh, April sixteenth a Saturday? Yes, yes, it is. Now the city cleanup is on April twenty third, and uh, yeah. you might recall that uh, it, it came up that uh, there is going to be invasive species removal and tree planting at uh, Hillendale Park. Park. Yeah, and I think it'd be nice to have. Some of us there, I plan to be there. On April 23rd? And April 23rd okay. is part of the city. Well, you might have something going on. That's the same day as Yeah, the, well, I do have, but I'll try to see if I can be involved. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, on April 16th, uh, the what uh, normally, is normally the greater, uh, on April 16th, there'll, there's been a continuous involvement with the Greater Oregon City Watershed Council on removing ev evasives on... Uh, Abernathy Creek Park, okay. which is a small park. Um, normally, we schedule that for the 23rd. We, we're moving to the 16th, not because of the uh, Hillendale, but because we have people from uh, Oregon City High School's ROTC work with oh, us. Okay. They had a different event on the 23rd that their people are participating with, but we should have somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 or 12 of them will be coming up to work with us at... Uh, at uh, Abernathy Creek Park. Where is uh, that? 
Uh, that's uh, that's the area that uh, where the city bought up houses in uh, the the Oxbow that's okay. uh, right by the Abernathy right, Center. Right, right. Uh, that Oxbow area okay. is uh, accessed then Park. off Washington Street or accessed off you, that you little side street. It, you, yeah, no, you access it off Abernathy. Uh, John, okay. right? It's John Sorry. Adams. Yeah, the dead okay. ends at that it. side, right. and so you saying. access it off Abernathy. Okay, and as soon as you turn off Washington Street. The, the John John Adams is very close, so mm -hmm. you're uh, you're only about maybe 50 feet or okay. so uh, before you hit that intersection. Just well, a small small natural area. Is that 9 a.m. till something? You're it's doing? nine. I'm pretty sure it is 9 a.m. till something. Probably till noon. Okay. Uh, we've already indicated that there's a, which I think anybody can go to, is this event at the ELC on on uh, on Saturday, this coming Saturday mm -hmm. when. Uh, I guess a lot of this design stuff is going to be presented to a broader in a simpler way. I think. Is that it? I think that's a that's nine till noon. That's nine till yeah. noon. And, then, and you're well, certainly welcome. What they're doing is uh, people that were involved had stories. Some of us got interviewed. <laughs> I thought there'd be bad stories, but you know, but, but they're good stories. <laughs> Nothing was bad at all. I'm really very pleased. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> One story about a turkey vulture being moved from Bend to the site and doing something in the van, the college van, all the way here that was not good. It will be a, a well, little you story. You expect when you put a turkey vulture <laughs> in the <laughs> There you go. All right. But anyway, so it's stories and kind of people's recollections and people that were involved. And But uh, absolutely, everybody's welcome. You know. And uh, then there is a, uh, another ELC thing. Various organizations have been invited, and I think... They're, they're talking about the ELC plan to uh, representatives from different organizations. The Greater Oregon City Watershed Council uh, was invited to send a participant. Allison Heimowitz, who has worked at worked at the ELC, yep. she's now she's now at the zoo, but she uh, she wanted to represent the Greater Oregon City Watershed Council, and that was fine. Uh, I. Um, I saw on the list the Natural Resource Committee was not a uh, hmm. was not represented. Yeah. So I called in and I'll be representing the Natural sure. Resource Committee. Um, I don't know the what the exact focus of what, that meeting. When is that? Three o'clock on tomorrow. Oh, that's tomorrow. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. and that's at ELC. That's at ELC. Oh, okay. Right. But yeah. I don't. I don't think. I don't think that's an open public meeting. Right. No problem. Yeah. Um, right. And those. Uh, those are the announcements, I, the things I have. Uh, start, Bill, anything you want to say? Um, I wanted to just clarify the tree discussions yes. we had okay. a month or so ago. Yeah. And to make it clear that um, there was two different things we were talking about. I'm not sure that was clear to everybody. We were talking about the heritage tree and fines. Mm -hmm for cutting one, but then a totally separate issue was the waterboard park. Yes. So I just want to, and I wish Dorothy was here, um, I wanted to make sure that, you know, everybody knew it was two different things, and uh, it definitely, there's a big difference between the way that would be handled, the waterboard park under the Oregon Forestry Act uh, versus our heritage tree program where I think if you made it too punitive then who would want to sign up for a heritage tree very good point no yeah that's true yeah mm. but that's not the issue with the waterwork park not the issue at waterwork park no. right but, so that's all I just wanted to make sure that that was clear in my yeah. own mind and right. everybody else's as well it, I mean, it's it seems in the like future the, you know if we designate if we successfully designate more heritage trees and more heritage tree stands and uh, manage to find grants potentially to incentivize people to take long-term care of those resources and things those those are the kinds of things we'd like to incentivize um, the waterbird park issue being a park owned by the citizens of Oregon City was essentially a, a, tra a trespass issue and a criminal act uh, that the parks department, you know, prosecuted under the under the law, um, which is an entirely different thing. Um, so, right. yeah. 
We haven't had that many heritage trees requested at this point, I don't think. <coughs> We've had um, five and had, had, had Has that program been presented to the individual neighborhood associations, do you know? Yes. Um, Dorothy and I uh, have presented it. Dorothy's started to go around the neighborhood associations. She mentioned this tonight. On the, I talked to her on the phone before the meeting. She's spoken with Barkley Hills uh, and with another group with respect to the uh, uh, St. John Cemetery, uh, as well as uh, she's g gone to uh, the Episcopal Church during the Friends of Trees planting with some literature and um, trying to get the word out, let people know about it. Um, so, and she's going to continue to keep doing that. Because I think yeah. the vast majority of the people in Oregon City are not aware of it. Yeah, I have been getting a little more interest, and in, I think due to Dee Dee's efforts, which is great. Um, but anyway, we need to get the word out more. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, I've just I've, I know a couple people, or one person in particular that's over there, kind of I guess just west of the hospital, but still kind of in the the ravine, close to the ravines and stuff, and they're yeah. actually having some landslide issues. Okay. Um, and actually having some, I think they were having some core samples drilled, and they were having to analyze and trying to figure out yeah. what to do. And I was just kind of curious what that relates to all the apartment complexes right. there after Beaver, after Beaver Creek or off Beaver Creek. So as you know, the apartment slide was an issue that was uh, dealt with by the city, and there was evacuation, and then the owners moving forward with an application to put in a very large retaining structure. Uh, it requires a land use application because of the nature of the retaining wall. Um, we ha have a pre-application conference scheduled with now This is them. Berry Hill Apartments. That's Berry Hill Apartments. Yeah. Trillium Park HOA uh, and the Homeowners Association over there are, um, you know, a lot of the uh, area is affected by our geologic hazard overlay district um, there are active slides and by active slide zones I mean they're active based on mapping that Dogami has done um, and they're also steeply sloped and whenever there's hydrology or you know wet subsurface conditions all of that gets exacerbated um, so for existing developments that have been approved under older codes, you know, we have to respond uh, to situations as they arise. Mm -hmm. New development um, has to be reviewed through our much more stringent geologic hazard overlay code that we adopted uh, and amended over the last few years, m most recently in 2010 with updated maps so we have a 200-foot review area for ancient landslides and landslide zones and a 50-foot review area from any slope over 25 percent. And when you combine those two together, that forms our geologic hazard overlay. And if that overlay is flagged on any property, the engineering department takes a look at any development, excavation, utility line trenching, you name it, to make sure that um, they're not going to exacerbate any known conditions. Furthermore, there may be requirements for subsurface excavation, and if the subsurface excavation reveals things that aren't mapped, scarps that didn't show up on in a prior map, then you know the same conditions for mitigation and uh, additional geotechnical engineering requirements are going to kick in. Um, that overlay district has residential density restrictions. Uh, essentially, when you're over 25% slope, the density is sharply decreased for any allowable housing units. Um, over 35%, there is no allowable density. Um, and if you have a lot of record that is vacant today, and the majority of that lot is over 35 percent the code only allows one house regardless of the size of the parcel um, and that's essentially because if we were to completely disallow development on a platted lot of record that would be a constitutional taking and the city can be challenged on it but there are sufficient construction and development standards in place such that 
once you agree as a city to allow a housing unit, you sort of then have to review it to make sure that it meets all the standards of the code. And there's a requirement for peer review by our geotechnical engineering consultant. So we review, we have him review what the applicant's geotechnical engineer reviews, make sure it meets code. We often, and that always reveals something that didn't come up on the application. Um, and then any recommendations that come out of the review process for final construction plans have to be confirmed at final occupancy that they, the initial recommendation was actually followed on the final occupancy of structure. So it wasn't just stamped on a plan and then forgotten <coughs> about. Yeah. That's part of the new amendments that were adopted in 2010. Okay. Yeah. That being said, you know, I think it's probably, we've heard from various experts that it's a pretty progressive code. If we need to look at it again for whatever reason in the future, either by state mandate or a local condition that requires us to look at it as a as a city again, you know, we'll do that. Yeah. The, the, um, now the trillium the state, is, is there any structural problems that are going on there? Well, there's the road that goes down there has a, uh, as I understand it, a monitoring device on it mm -hmm. to monitor the slide that's going on there. There are a couple of lots of record that aren't built there that uh, owner does want to develop. Um, uh, so, uh, John Lewis, our public works director, is aware of the situation. If there's, I haven't heard anything in the last two months about any active sliding going on, but if there is, I'd the like to report that. The exception to the other developments that they actually put in pilings. Yeah, you're right, on, the, on that. On the residential course. Yeah, yep. The, um, now, you didn't mention the Forest Edge Apartments. Mm -hmm. Are they, are they mm -hmm. actually, Permanently vacated. I know it was a water line issue that uh, triggered that. Is, is yeah. Um, well, I think the f I don't know if they're permanently vacated. Uh, a lot will depend on the outcome of the proposed retaining wall. Well, that, uh, I'm uh, talking about. The, I'm talking no, about Forest Edge, not not Forest Edge. The apartments on two thirteen. Yeah. They're uh, asking. They're asking for a retaining wall as well. Um, the recently slit, yeah. I'm not talking about Barkley. I'm not talking about Berry Hill. Berry Hill. I'm talking about the Forest Edge apartment. Yeah, that's what I'm referring to. Yeah. So those mm -hmm. are the ones that are requesting a building up a. I believe so. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, it would be a 15 foot high retaining wall. Um, our code requires that retaining walls have to be stepped back and terraced. Um, so they need a variance for that. Yeah, we had yeah. That, that was a change that the city had. Yeah, we had one on Holcomb. We had this 15-foot single retaining wall that went in, and so now it has to be terraced out. Hmm. Yeah, yeah well, that's it, good. Well, they need a variance from Planning Commission in order not to terrace it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So be a <clears throat> discretionary decision. Yeah. The I was just curious mm -hmm. go ahead. Uh, no, about no. the. Um, we had that presentation back in January about the trail. If there's been any information about that, um, I'm that, sorry. The, the propo oh, proposed yeah. trail on the uh, ri on the river walk. Uh, the oh. one that went up to no. Oh, Metro Metro's yeah. trail. Yeah, yeah. They they approved the design. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, I don't um, know if the city's approved the design, but uh, they they've come up with their uh, basically their final design. Okay. Yeah, we haven't seen it yet. The city hasn't mm -hmm. seen it yet. What was that mm -hmm. meeting we had? Was that December? The, the trail one was back in January. Yeah. When I'm not the, sure what the, the planner on that. The planner or the was it Katie presented that trail. Oh, um, sorry. Um, oh, yeah, that's Kelly, the Kenema Kelly. Bluffs. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. Oh, okay. Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, different. That oh, was that very. Was okay. <laughs> we were talking about a grant application. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah they were yeah. talking about the proposal. Right. Money and um, things happened with it. Uh, at this point, I think they're still. Yeah. Working on the grant okay. application. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Their grants have all been submitted. Yeah. Uh, now Metro has to choose. Uh, the uh, high school also submitted one. Oh, okay. The yeah. trail that connects the high school to the college. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to do improvements on that trail, so they uh, they submitted a, a grant under that same 
thing. So you, you're talking about the Kenema McLaughlin that's Trail. Right, yeah, that's yeah, right. that's, and, that's and, the one. You know, yeah. the, the grants have, all, uh, have already gone in, yeah. and I'm sure Metro has got a lot of proposals. Proposals, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I, they, I, don't, I think we'll get a report back on that process. soon. Yeah, okay. Uh, so on Clackamas Cove update, um, the engineering plan submittal was submitted uh, this week to Public Works. So that includes the apartment site and the public improvements associated with the abutting right away on the apartment site. Um, and uh, I haven't seen any further feedback on that yet. Um, so it's does that include very early. Main Street improvements? A portion of them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. do you mean a portion? Well, the ones immediately abutting the apartments. Oh, okay. And then getting. But it's a full Main Street improvement. Yeah, full Main Street. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to a half street improvement. Right. Right. Would that also yeah. include the roundabout at the top? That's not a, exactly a joint. I guess it I is a joint. I haven't seen it, Jerry. Uh, I don't know. Um, yeah. But um, I don't know that they will trigger the the roundabout at the top at this point. And, okay. Yeah, because that's gonna. <clears throat> That's going to need some pretty significant that, engineering. That probably comes into play yeah. when the east side development comes. Yeah, I think that's going to come in with the stuff that's going to happen. Right. Yeah. Kind of. Over Do on you, the other can, side. Can you tell us anything about the uh, <clears throat> Lower Harbor Trust Fund? Um, Effort that went on and the city oh, yeah. approved it to do at least a feasibility study. Do you know much about that at this I point? I did spoke. I spoke. Gosh, it was three weeks ago. <laughs> Sorry, um, I spoke to Eric Underwood about that, the economic development director. Yeah. Um, I believe that the city. What he told me was that the city commission had freed up seventy thousand dollars. Fifty thousand. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. you might be right. Yeah. To look at the feasibility of of uh, of that, right. um, and that's as much as I was told. Okay. So, I think I can yeah. give people an update. Um, yeah. Because so, <clears throat> first of all, Lower Harbor Trust Fund. Some of us met, and I wish I would have invited you. I didn't know. <laughs> Boy, to, to just discuss nominations for super fund mitigation here at Willamette Falls region, and. <clears throat> The Lower Harbor Trust Fund's been used by Gladstone to great benefit. The commission over there may not think that. There's a new commission, but the old commission got it going, and uh, they've gotten two and a half million dollars worth of money into improvements over there over the last ten years, and they'll get more this summer and fall. Anyway, the so point was, could we do something in Oregon City? And so Brian Shaw and I met throughout the summer with Eric Underwood and others. And then we invited John Runyon, who represents the trust fund, to come in, who I think we should invite to talk to or do a work session with him. What it comes down to is the city commission authorized 50000 to go into a feasibility study to start determining whether you can do things in the cove and meet the Lower Harbor Trust Fund goals. And they, they believe you can. The question is, how do you move forward, including perhaps channel maintenance to get water back in the cove? which we used to call dredging, but I'm now calling it water quality improvement project, all right? <laughs> so, um, and Ed, Ed Darrell, the director of the uh, developer, is very excited about the possibilities, including going around other parts of the cove that he could never touch because of the agency issues. DSL, ordinary high water line, Corps of Engineers, NOAA, <laughs> it's it's a agency uh, <clears throat> smorgasbord, all right? so. The, the Lower Harbor Trust Fund will help him do those things that we, I think, as a committee would have wanted to have happen, but never thought could happen. And now he has an ombudsman, the developer, to help make things happen. Now the only holdup, as my understanding, it may not be holdup, is that the 50,000 idea is going out for an RFQ, request for qualifications, first, to see who they want to choose, and then, I guess, you would do an RFP or something? Is that through you guys, or who is that through, Pete? Well, I think maybe that's what the money is for, is for the development of the RFQ. Um, and then firms would submit their credentials for putting together a, a proposal or a restoration proposal of some kind. Yeah. And that would be, I think, through approved through Urban Renewal okay. Agency, um, because that's who's affected. If the feasibility proves workable, then the trust fund people in Portland that represent the trust fund, the monies, then they 
agree to move forward and make make the cove a project and outside the cove the river mm -hmm. channel mm -hmm. water quality enhancement channel um, effort um, now there was another uh, ideas a series of ideas I showed everyone here except for you I'm sorry which I'd like us all to have a, a meeting with John Runyon um, do you know who I'm talking about Pete mm -hmm. you know yep. we need to get him here and have us do a work session if you still feel that way well, I think it'd be nice I think we because uh, it isn't just the cove now no I understand that. I think it'd be good to have John Runyon come in and speak to us I think it'd probably good uh, to invite maybe appro appropriate uh, staff members yeah too. absolutely okay. and now do we want a special work session or do we I don't know what do we have coming up? In, uh, do we have a in our next meetings? Do we have you know this? We've only had one item before us. Right. We might be be able to do it just at one of our regular um, meetings. Yeah, that'd be Let's nice. See. Potentially, we may have a couple of natural resource applications for review um, coming up. Uh, the so we'll have those on the agenda next month. I expect. Uh, John Lewis um, and John Runyon um, could potentially talk about the the Lower Harbor Trust Fund idea. It'd be more fleshed yeah. out by then. Isn't yeah. John Lewis being tasked to kind of work with this issue? Is that what you're hearing? Oh, I would think so. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was sensing too. Yeah. But. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Public works director. Public works director, oh, okay. which yeah. is neat to have the public works director involved. You know. Um, yeah, if there's some way we could do that as part of our normal meeting or whatever, okay. I just think the reason I'm saying that is that Westland, I also introduced them, John Runyon and people, to Westland's Parks and Rec directors who jumped on this. And Westland now is nominated, and the money's beginning to flow, to Cedar Oaks uh, Island and Cedar Oaks Boat Ramp, an island for major habitat improvements. And then <clears throat> in a place where John Borden, some of you know John, lives, where I grew up, was a rock bar down there with a natural pond that would could be a good rearing area if you get water to flow more naturally through it not just during the winter but during the summer that lonesome bottoms project as it's called <laughs> uh, lonesome bottom project bottom land that's going to be something that they're going to move on to in west Lynn. so i think it behooves us to think of some other ideas that we'd like to pursue in oregon city yeah. you know and the risk the city is very little Money or anything else, it's a pretty remarkable thing. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and Steve, uh, Pete, I don't want to call you Steve all day on here. Uh, Pete, do you have any, any uh, comments? The final thing is the status on the river, on the uh, Willamette Falls Legacy Project coming up. Um, this will be advertised to every board and committee and friends group. Um, March 30th, there will be a meeting at Abernathy Center to get people up to speed on the status of the Willamette Falls Legacy Project. Um, and it's primarily from what Christina is telling me, it's a listening meeting uh, to get in feedback from the community and keep everybody engaged while the design work is going on. Um, and uh, we haven't publicized it yet, but they will be coming out probably within a week. Um, with the invitations to that. Yeah. Very good. Thank so we'll, we'll all get emailed then. Yeah, you'll all be good. big, uh, what is the term? Uh, yeah, as a um, community, what are they? All of the meetings for the Lima Falls Legacy Project are termed a certain way. Um, you are community listening post or something like that. But yeah, <laughs> you're familiar with this bill. <laughs> so it'll be coming out uh, very shortly. Um, staffing levels of the Community Development Department. Right now we have two new planners who are backfilling for Christina Robertson Gardner and Kelly Reed, uh, who have gone to work primarily uh, on the Willamette Falls Legacy Project for the next two years. Wow. So our new um, <laughs> assistant planner is Deliana uh, Vasileva from Siskiyou County, um, graduate of Portland State University. Yay! Yay! Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> and also our assistant planner, 20 hours a week, working primarily on uh, um, development review and historical review board, is uh, John Stutzman, former community development director for Roseburg. 
So mm-hmm. he's got a lot of experience looking to get back into a halftime planner position. And we hired him. He's a great Roseburg asset. and Siskiyou. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's got, he's got some Oregon ties. So Good. Um, mm-hmm. getting those guys up to speed, they've been with us two and a half weeks now. Now, so. is, are there are there positions essentially temporary? Two year positions. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So that's where the planning department's at. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. I have a question here. I, I, I guess I didn't ask it under communication. I have more of a question. The tree issue that um, mm-hmm. Rick, uh, B- Bill was talking about. I feel like we should be somehow involved <laughs> in giving some. Um, direction to the city commission i don't know what they know what to do at oh. this point i well uh, i should have chimed in and uh, what they did do at least in terms of the penalty on yeah. removal of a heritage tree was mm-hmm. increase it in the code to 600 uh dollars for any tree 600 600 yeah for any heritage tree removed um and uh, that was adopted already mm-hmm. um you know and that doesn't preclude the city from you know enforcing other enforcement or you know actions on city property and that sort of thing yeah and does the city tree code that we all worked hard on still include the the grove component heritage grove the stand it's now called a stand though stand yeah okay, yeah, stand. yeah so right. yes and if yeah. someone wanted to nominate a stand how mm-hmm. do we do that um the code says they can nominate a stand um if there's a stand health report and various other things that document that it's meeting you know the criteria that we adopted either the site criteria as well as the heritage code criteria the reason i'm asking yeah. is uh, the 50th yeah. celebration of the college being a college for 50 years mm-hmm. and the 40th year of the lc being a thing for 40 mm-hmm. years there's this grove of trees I referred to before the Oregon white ash swale mm-hmm. that they have no intention i believe of of a building and i can't imagine that they would mm-hmm. and that wouldn't it be interesting for us to take the lead and, and with them nominate it as a 50th year birthday to the community that 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 particular it's stand the, it's on the community college property yep. okay it's all on community college land not well oregon city senior high might have a little bit of it on oregon city um yeah i mean if you can approach the right to uh, you right. know People, I know. I think I know. We're talking. The, we probably all do. I mean, the trustees but, uh, and Bob Cochran. And yeah, that sort of exactly. Thing. Yeah. And and maybe Joanne Truesdale, the president. You right. know, talked to her on Saturday a little bit about yeah. the idea because yeah. it'd be a neat symbol of where they're at. Fifty years, um, and they've stewarded that. There was there was talks about removing that thing several times, and they didn't do it. Um, it it's it's a real boggy kind of setting. You know, I, I should mention that for a future agenda item. You know, we. When we adopt, when the city commission adopted the new heritage tree code recently, yeah. we had a long discussion about the need for incentives, um, either through the through grants to pay for technical reports or um, you know uh, shoring up arborist uh, recommendations, following through on arborist recommendations as an incentive for a property owner to do this. And that hasn't gone any further yet. It's something that the Natural Resources Committee um, could be involved in as a work item. So I want to put that out yeah. there. Um, well, well, the stand idea, the, if, yeah. if um, Doug, you and I could talk to the president, I'll be there on Saturday sure. as a concept. No one knows about this, and I think we as a group could be the group to lead it forward. be really neat. Is it, is, if you walk down that path, is it to the, uh, <clears throat> the east of that path? It's you, if you walk down the asphalted trail between the senior high school yeah. detention area and the Barlow Hall parking lots on either side of you is the yes, stand. Right. Yeah. That's, that's what yeah. I was wondering. It that might involve the school district a little bit too. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure it does. Yeah. It, yeah. It so the trail cuts it in half. Too. Pardon? <laughs> the trail cuts it in half. Well, you know, the trail went through it. You're right. It, it was, it's, uh, it was an access road they had to have for some reason between the two campuses. I don't remember why. But and, and the intention, I think, is to improve the yeah. movement of students yeah. from the campus. I mean, yeah. I, doesn't I know hurt they, they, they've got a, they do have a culvert connecting it, yeah. but when they're looking at this pathway, they're thinking of possibly including a, a better culvert system connecting the right. two sides. Because it does, it is, a, it is a wetland. It's probably four acres. What is the species of tree? I'm sorry. Oregon white ash, white ash, Fraxus, whatever. 
And I think the other thing is it would give us uh, something to work on, yeah. <laughs> which is significant, and it would also call attention to something we've not taken much, well, we took leadership to, to do it, you know, protect roads, but give some people other ideas that they might, I mean, if you're really talking about habitat mm -hmm. protection and all that, you know, that, another one comes to mind that is on private land, and that's at the Ainsworth Mansion, and you're not going to like this, but it's all black locust, but it's in a very <laughs> tight grove, and it looks like a forest. It's beautiful. <laughs> well, as an example, you know. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> There's a, well, maybe maybe well, this. You got to bring that up with the property owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe this was the prompt other people to think more than individual trees, more holistically. Yeah, you know? I agree with you. Yeah. Really? <laughs> well, you, you put it from New Mexico, black locust. Black locust. Uh, it was planted all over Oregon in settlements for pioneer wood needs. I don't know well, where it comes from. I don't know where it comes from. Yeah, New Mexico. New Mexico. Well, probably is. Yeah. 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 Well, so. it's it's in all the old settlements in Oregon. But, but right. They have that McCarver there's, house. There's nothing preventing too. you from having like a heritage carpet. tree that's not an indigenous oh, species. Oh yeah. No. 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 I don't mean that at all. Yeah. All right. We had a huge one on a state wildlife area in Colorado. It used oh. state record black <laughs> locust. Yeah. Big. They do get big. Well, I'm gonna. All right. Barring wow. another an, an cause wow. for the good of the order. All right. Adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>